Hey everyone, it's Kong again, and today I want to talk about building up your Langrisser characters. I see a lot of players, especially newer players, asking why their characters are so much weaker compared to other players that they've seen, or else how they can make their characters stronger. They feel that they've hit a roadblock and they're wondering how they can ring out a little bit more power. This is a fairly complicated strategy game, especially for mobile, so I know there are a lot of different stats and daily things to focus on doing, and sometimes it can be hard to keep them all straight. So if you're just kind of getting situated in the game, or, you know, you're climbing up through the ranks and wondering how you can wring the most out of your characters, hopefully this will be a good overview of all the different things that you need to focus on. So the first and most obvious thing is your character's level. Now if you've ever played an RPG, then you know what's going on here. It's basically experience that you use to level up your characters. You can get experience through running content, but it's so laughably minuscule that the main way of raising up your character's levels is through these experience potions. And the main way of getting experience potions is in the Secret Realm, through Angelica's Special Training School. And you have two daily bonus reward chances. The next way to power up your characters is through their star level. And in order to do that you need to collect memory shards. Other than summoning, the main way of collecting memory shards is through your daily Gate of Fate runs. Now you can only do each of these Gate of Fate levels once per day. Once you've already completed it with three stars, you can sweep it. And you get nine total sweeps for Gates of Fate per day. Now this is a super important thing not to forget about, since you only have nine, and that's quite a strict limit when you have so many characters that you want to raise up through the star levels, you really need to make sure you're doing your nine Gate of Fates per day. The next thing to look at is your character's class advancement. The main way of raising up your character's class is these materials that you get through Time Rifts. And you can get 10 chances at Time Rift rewards for normal Time Rift levels, three for elite levels, and that's per day. And of course, you need to have completed the time rift level with three stars in order to be able to sweep it. Now the other way that you can get materials for leveling up your classes is through the guild store. So don't neglect guild wars, because it gets you this currency that you can spend on class materials as well. Once you've ranked up your classes, every character should have at least one main path maxed, now side paths are mostly optional, depending on how much you want to beef up your characters. If it's a character that you use all the time, or there are some specific characters that require their side paths a little bit more than others. For example, if I wanted to really use Lana, I would probably want to go down the side path as well to unlock her additional AoE attack and cleanse as an additional single target attack. But unlocking side paths after you've already gone down a main path will cost you runestone for each class that you unlock. And runestones are a really scarce resource, so you need to plan their use accordingly. The next way to build up your character's power is through equipment. And equipment is a really common concern for players. Now there are lots of ways to get equipment. You get one daily reward chance in the Secret Realm through the Goddess Trials, which is fighting dragons. You can also get rewards by doing daily joint battles. On certain days, joint battles give gear as rewards. There are also map events that sometimes come up here that offer gear, especially if you're at level 60, they have a fairly decent chance of giving you SSR gear. Now in terms of raising your gear's levels, the guild shop is another great place where you can get these runes that you need to upgrade the star levels of your individual gear pieces. If you've, uh, unlocked a time rift that will give you runes, you can sweep those as well, but I find the guild store is a really good bargain for you can get like 10 at a time and save yourself your stamina. The other thing you need to upgrade the star level of your equipment, unless you have duplicates, which in the case of this king's crown here, I don't want to use that king's crown to upgrade the star level because I have lots of characters who could use that piece of gear. You can go to the store in the equipment store and spend your Mithril Ore on these rare martial spirits. That's a pretty good use of your normal Mithril Ore. 
While we're in here, I would say to generally avoid spending your much rarer Orichalcum ore on equipment gambles, and instead save that for buying epic martial spirits. Because one of the things that's going to be really important for you is raising up the star level of your SSR gear, which is quite expensive. And you don't want to have to rely on pulling multiple copies of really rare SSR gear to level up the star level. So that's what you should be using your Orichalcum ore on, at least to start. Once you have all of your main characters fully geared up with max level SSR gear, then you start having a little bit more leeway of spending your Orichalcum ore on gambling in here. A final point about gear. It's a really common early mistake to neglect raising up your SR gear. If you don't have a piece of SSR gear that is raised up to an adequate level, SR gear will be more powerful. So for example, here with Leaden, I don't have a really good high level SSR hammer for him yet. So I've given him this max level Oath Sword, which took a little bit less investment. Oath Swords are fairly common, so I was able to get it up to 6 star level 50 without spending too much. And that gives him a lot more power than he would have if he just had a 3 or 4 star SSR hammer. So don't neglect your SR gear. If it's cheaper and easier for you to max that out, then it'll be really good stopgap for your characters. Now the next step while we're talking about equipment is your enchants. You get enchantment scrolls from usually from the same places where you get new equipment. So the Goddess Trial, Dragon Battles, and also the Joint Battles that reward equipment. Now you can use your cheaper, lower level enchants just to unlock combination bonuses, like this two-piece bonus. I see Gerald and Layla have this Rough Sea enchant here, so if I wanted to just get them a little bonus to their stats, I could put another one of these really low-level Rough Sea enchants on this piece. Just for now, just to get the little set bonus going. And once you find some good endgame equipment that you know you're going to want to max out, that's when you can start using your rarer, higher level enchants to try to really tweak the rolls that you get on the gear. Next we have your character's soldiers and your training. The main way to rank up your soldiers, really the only way, is in the secret realm in Anarchy's Gym. And you get two daily rewards in here, and the anarchy that's available for you to fight changes per day. So the anarchy's gyms reward you with training material that you can go into the training ground and spend to upgrade your different troop types, and also some various training nodes that unlock bonuses for your troops. Another thing to remember in here is to always have some expeditions on the go. Expeditions are a, a decent way, at least an easy way, of collecting some free experience and training materials. So there's no reason not to have three teams on the go in here at all times. The characters that you assign to your expeditions, you can still use them for all the content that you want. You can still bring them to battle and all that stuff. It's basically just a passive timer to get a few small free rewards. Now the strategy I recommend for your training Focus on maxing out a couple of key soldiers, rather than spreading out too thinly. So pick a soldier that you know you're going to use a lot, or that you need for certain characters, or multiple characters, and try to save up and hoard the training materials that you need to rank those soldiers up. You can also slowly chip away at these lower training nodes, up until they start requiring SSR materials, then you're probably going to want to continue to save and hoard those for specific soldier types. And when you max out a soldier, then you can either pick another soldier that you want to focus on, or you can go back and start spending some of your rare materials in these training nodes. The next way of powering up your characters is through their bonds. Each character has these six nodes, so you can increase your total soldier stats, your total hero stats, and then, you know, different specific soldier and hero stats. Normally, to rank up these bonds, what you need is keys, which you can get from, primarily, in the Secret Realm, your one daily Bonding Realm battle. And then once you get into the Heart Bond, you start needing some more rare materials. 
Now, every once in a while, a daily map event will come up that will reward you with some of those heart bond materials. But the other way to get those is through the Secret Realm's Eternal Temple. And this is a one daily battle that you can do against a super monster, essentially. And the monster rotates each day. Finally, you can also do, on certain days, there are joint battles that reward you with keys to unlock characters' bonds. And the guild store also sells some of the more uncommon heart bond upgrade materials. So again, join a guild, do your guild wars, and get your guild medals. Bonds are kind of an overlooked way of getting a little bit of extra power out of your characters, especially for new players. So don't be afraid to spend your keys on the characters that you use a lot. Now, a relatively new way of further increasing your character's power is through this mechanic that they call Equipment Mastery. Once you've fully mastered a class, for example, my Liden's Templar class here is fully mastered, it unlocks this new screen that's essentially laid out in terms of equipment slots, although it doesn't have anything to do with your actual equipment. You can change your equipment and it won't affect any of this. Basically, if you have Mastery Stones, you can choose an equipment slot, and then, kind of like how you enchant your gear, you can roll a randomly generated stat bonus. And you get these Mastery Stones through Ancient Beckoning in the Secret Realm. Ancient Beckoning is essentially five super bosses that are on a rotation of six days each over a 30-day cycle. And they award Mastery Stones based on your performance on each boss as well as a total score when the cycle ends. So I would highly recommend not being afraid to just jump in against these bosses and get terrible scores. You know, if you're unprepared, you're not going to go ahead and get S plus rank like the top tier players are. But as long as you're doing a little bit of damage, if you can just get yourself to E rank or D rank, at the end of the five days, you'll get a little reward bundle that has some of these mastery stones. And then you can use your Mastery Stones to give your characters stat bonuses. So the Mastery Stones are specific to your class, so these are the holy ones that I have. If I clicked on another character, I'd have a different set of stones, like Cavalry, for example. And then there's a different stone for each stat to raise. So there's a whole bunch of stones that you'll eventually pile up in your inventory for each different class type and each different stat type but you can use those on the characters that you use a lot to try to essentially just crank their stats up a little bit more. The final way to increase your character's power is through the Awakening mechanic. And if you're already at the point where you're working on Awakening, then you probably don't need help with this. This requires a lot of investment, you have to be level 70 on your character, and you have to do some really high-level endgame content in order to get the materials to even start doing this. So congratulations if you're working on awakening your characters. I don't know why you watched this video. <laughs> so just as a quick wrap up, you have your character's individual level, which you raise by using experience potions from Angelica's training school. You have your character's star level, which you raise by grinding up your gates of fate, nine per day, don't forget them. You have class advancement, which you can raise through sweeping time rifts or buying materials in the guild shop. You have your equipment, which you gain by doing goddess trial battles against dragons, joint battles, map events, and you can upgrade them using materials from the guild shop. You also have your enchants. You have your soldiers and training grounds, which you can raise up by using materials from Anarchy's gym. You have your bonds, which you can raise up by doing bonding realm battles in the secret realm and eternal temple battles in the secret realm, as well as joint battles and some map events. And then you have Equipment Mastery, which you can chip away at by doing your best in Ancient Beckoning. So again, I hope this was a helpful overview of all the different ways that you can use to increase your character's strength. Don't forget to do all those daily battles, don't forget to do your Gates of Fate, and eventually your characters will be strong enough to tackle any endgame challenge. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video, and happy Langrissing!